Well, of course, economic purists are actually chairing the move by General Motors. But again, considering what the congressman said, that $51 billion bailout, and more recently, uh, billions of dollars in profits from lower corporate taxes, and many are saying General Motors should be more grateful. In fact, it should not be disingenuous on this. The whole thing, of course, doesn't help the image of capitalism in a country fed up with billionaire CEOs buying back their own stock while they fire hardworking Americans. I brought Douglas Holt Aiken back with me again because, Doug, I love your work, man. I read it every day, and I know you're an economic <laughs> purist. Uh, you know, I don't know what I am these days, to be quite frank with you, but I am afraid. I'm afraid that these sort of headlines are going to get the American public to vote in some people in power uh, at some point that are going to disrupt this whole thing. I think capitalism is on trial here, and I think often they fail. Well, I think uh, we have a couple lessons in this. First and foremost, I think we should be concerned about the workers of Ohio. Uh, this is a, a labor force that has skills. Other companies may come in and take advantage of that, and that's what you would hope would happen in a dynamic economy. I think this illustrates as well the danger of government bailouts. I was against the auto bailouts. This is one of the things that happens. You stop being able to run your company on the basis of market conditions. I don't think the GM decisions have anything to do with the overall economy. I don't think they have a lot to do with the auto industry. I think they have a lot to do with GM. It had a product line that was, was failing. It needed to retool for the future. And it couldn't do that flexibly because it had an obligation from these bailouts in the past. And you're starting to see that in the discussions surrounding it right now. That's a really bad thing in a market economy. Yeah, I'm glad you and brought that. the last that, thing I'd that, say is... Okay. Go, Doug. Yeah, I mean, the last thing is, I, I don't think you want to single them out for any special punishment. You don't want public policy dictated by single companies. We want to provide market conditions that, that let American companies and American workers thrive. Level playing fields, best man wins. I love what you had to say about the bailouts. I, I agree with you. I thought the statement that they put out yesterday about autonomous cars and electric vehicles is like sort of their eureka moment. Uh, you know, for half a dozen years, we've known about this, right? We've made a lot of money right. on autonomous car stocks like Mobileye four or five years ago. So this is not new. I thought it was that part was disingenuous. What about also, though, you know, the idea that, OK, you've got these tax cuts and then you see this from more and more of these companies. And, and the one I think that really is more worrisome is when they, when they fire people, but they buy back billions of dollars of their own stock. It's, is there any sort of idea that, you know, yeah, your responsibility is to your shareholders, but staying in, making sure that you don't ever elect a true socialist might be the best thing you could do for your shareholders? I think one of the things you learn from this is, you know, for, as much as I love good tax policy, that doesn't solve all your problems. You got a bad company, you're not making good management decisions. A tax cut's not going to save you. And if you are a shareholder and you've got a company that has been given the opportunity to have more profits in the, in the tax arena and they still can't make it go, maybe you don't have the right management. I mean, a lot of this to me revolves around do you get effective corporate governance and are these guys too insulated? Uh, that's an important part of, of capitalism. Winners should win, right. but losers shouldn't win, too. <laughs> Real quick, then, because I'm getting a wrap, though. Uh, if we ever come up on uh, one of these banking situations again, would it be smart to bail out these big banks that have got, only gotten bigger? It is never smart to bail out big banks or big corporations. Uh, you know, too big to fail is not something a private company does. It's something that policymakers do because they're afraid for their jobs. You need stronger policy, and we don't bail people out. All right, Doug, you're the best, man. Thanks a lot. Appreciate it.